in this question we have a small metal sphere kept inside the cavity of a large metal sphere let us read this question a small metal sphere carrying a charge plus q is located at the center of a spherical cavity of a large uncharged metal sphere as shown okay so this is the large uncharged metal sphere this is the cavity portion this is the center of the cavity and that's where we have kept this small metal sphere okay this small metal sphere has a charge plus q this right the large metal sphere it has no charge it is uncharged now we want to find the electric field at p1 p2 and p3 and the radius for that is all given okay but before we start we must figure out what will be the charge induced on the inner surface and outer surface of the large metal sphere now this plus q will be distributed uniformly on the outer surface of that metal sphere and so we don't have to worry about that you can think of this as a point sitting at the center think of this as plus q it is going to induce minus q on the inner surface this minus q will be uniformly distributed because this is sitting at the center okay right so it will be uniformly distributed on the inner surface but where did this minus q come from it must have been pulled from there overall it was uncharged so that means that must now have how much charge plus q and that plus q will basically be distributed uniformly on the outer surface now i'm going to start by looking at the electric field at p3 to do that what i'm going to do is to basically draw a gaussian surface at passing through p3 okay gaussian surface passing through p3 now that is the gaussian spherical surface because you can see everything is spherically symmetric it's a good idea to take a spherical surface passing through p3 so the center of the gaussian surface is this the radius is r3 i'm going to take that now everywhere you can see through the spher spherical symmetry you can see if the electric field here is e everywhere it will be e radially outwards right so if i now pick a small surface like that it has a surface area ds which is going to be radially outwards and it will also have an electric field e3 which is also radially outward so both are pointing in the same direction now gauss law we need to calculate the flux right for gauss law which is integral e dot ds but e and ds they are in the same direction so instead of doing a dot product you can just multiply and e is constant for the entire surface so you can take that out of the integral so you'll get e times integral of ds which will basically be the surface area now what is the surface area 4 pi r square now r here is r3 so you're going to get e3 into 4 pi r3 square so this will be the flux through this gaussian surface now what does gauss law tell us for a closed surface the flux passing through the closed surface closed surface is going to be the charge enclosed by epsilon naught so q in q in which will basically be all of this charge divided by epsilon naught what is q in plus q minus q plus q all of this will have to add up right so q minus q q you are going to add this up you can cancel that out you will get q by epsilon naught right so this entire charge inside is going to be q right plus q minus q plus q means total charges plus q so plus q by epsilon naught right that is e3 into 4 pi r3 square so if i bring this down i will get what is e3 so that will be the electric field at p3 right so electric field at p3 is e3 which is q by 4 pi epsilon naught r3 square q by 4 pi epsilon naught r3 square of course you can directly also say right you can say that this spherically distributed charge behaves like a point charge this is spherically distributed that behaves like a point charge and this also behaves like a point charge so total thing behaves like a point charge sitting at the center which will be plus q minus q plus q so totally it is plus q sitting here at a distance of r so basically what will be the electric field 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by r3 square which is exactly what we have got okay well that is the answer for what is the electric field at p3 we have used gauss law to find that because the question says use gauss law now what about p2 well p2 is in the metal p2 is in the metal i don't need gauss law for this i know the electric field at p2 must be zero the electric field at p2 must be zero but the question says use gauss law so what do i do well you can draw a gaussian surface at p2 which i'm not drawing 
okay but then i can say e2 into this gaussian surface surface area exactly like what we did right so i'm going to get e2 into 4 pi r2 square right that will be basically the flux passing through this that must be the charge enclosed what is the charge enclosed here you have minus q there you have plus q so enclosed charge will be minus q plus q which is basically zero right so you can write e2 into 4 pi r2 square that will be the flux through a gaussian surface passing through p2 what is, must that be equal to the total charge enclosed but this will be outside right this plus q that is there that is outside so that is not enclosed only minus q is enclosed and this plus q is enclosed so you're going to get q minus q by epsilon naught which is of course zero so e2 must be zero which we of course knew already right because it's in the metal once you have this point inside the metal inside the metal of course you know the electric field must be zero right so this e2 must be zero what about p1 uh, let us draw another gaussian surface right like this so here the electric field let me call it e1 i can use the same idea so for this what will be the flux the flux will be e1 into 4 pi r1 square why because everywhere the electric field will be radially out ds will also be radially out right and since it's constant electric field you can see by symmetry it is basically going to come out of the integral so the exact same thing that we did there we can do here also so e1 into 4 pi r1 square must be the charge enclosed by epsilon naught so for this the charge enclosed is only plus q so q by epsilon naught so e1 will be q by 4 pi epsilon naught r1 square q by 4 pi epsilon naught r1 square so that is the answer for the electric field at p1 electric field at p2 is e2 which is equal to 0 and electric field at p3 is e3 which is q by 4 pi epsilon naught r3 square r3 square